Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Werner. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for... Uh, uh, I'm uh, Chris from Epic Games. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about Epic, our products, uh, and how we use AWS to manage our infrastructure. Uh, I believe a lot of you know Epic from our very popular game, Fortnite. Uh, and for those of you who don't know Fortnite yet, uh, you now know it from a Werner shirt. So thank you, Werner, for that. Very appreciate it. Um, even though we're called Epic Games, uh, we definitely do a lot more than just games at Epic, right? Uh, over the years, you can see a number of games. You've probably played some of them from Gears of War, uh, Fortnite, certainly everyone knows, and so on. Um, so Epic's, uh, sorry, uh, Epic's been around uh, since about 1991. Uh, today we have over 800 employees uh, with 50 major studios and locations around the globe. Uh, in addition, we're also the developers of the Unreal Engine, uh, which is a suite of creation tools uh, enabling some really amazing experiences. So uh, Unreal Engine's been the core of Epic's business for many years now. Uh, we've got millions of developers around the world. I think we just announced about a, a number around 6 million. Uh, people who actually use Unreal to build any kind of high fidelity interactive experiences on a variety of platforms, PC, console, uh, mixed, mixed reality, virtual reality platforms, et cetera. Uh, and it's freely available at uh, unrealengine.com, so you can download it today. Uh, in addition to Unreal, uh, in addition to games, uh, Unreal is now used by a lot of enterprise applications as well. So everything from automotive, movies and film, uh, broadcast television, and a lot more. So uh, let me just show you a little bit of just how cool it is. So uh, here's an example of a real-time digital human uh, showing the power of Unreal. Uh, in this case, uh, you've got Andy Serkis. Uh, you know, basically, we're transferring the actor's facial expressions onto a real-time digital character. Um, so really, really cool stuff. This is all powered by the engine, all done by the real-time graphics that the engine does in real time. Uh, so really amazing stuff. Uh, and if you guys want to learn more, uh, please just check out our blog on UnrealEngine.com. We're always putting out new demos, new press releases, et cetera, uh, showing off some of the powers of this. Uh, uh, so in addition to the incredible experiences uh, we're enabling with Fortnite, uh, with, the, with the engine, sorry, let's uh, talk a little bit about Fortnite. So um, a lot of you know Fortnite. It's become a pop culture phenomenon across the world, and we're very proud of its success. Uh, if you haven't played it yet, uh, it's Fortnite's a free-to-play game, 100-player, last man standing game. Imagine after skydiving out of the battle bus, right? You know, shooting out with other players, building defensive structures uh, on your way to winning the game, what we like to call a victory royale. So uh, Fortnite's a very popular game. We have announced uh, over 125 million players worldwide uh, and millions of concurrent players all playing the game at the same time, even right now as we speak. So, uh, so now that we've talked a little bit about the game, let's talk a little bit about actually what's powering it. So um, Epic began its transition from a developer of games with Gears of War uh, to a full online publisher uh, using a games as a service model sometime around 2014. Uh, and of course, we needed a reliable cloud provider that would provide all the basics we needed so that we could really focus on the innovation of our products and our platform. Uh, you can see by all the plethora of AWS services, we're basically all in on AWS to operate our services for Fortnite uh, and our platform. So uh, AWS has really enabled a number of things for us. Um, you know, so Fortnite has grown more than 100 times in the last nine months alone. Uh, we have an almost 10 times difference in game server workloads between high peak and low peak in any particular region. So a lot of uh, allocation, deallocation of servers all the time. Uh, we run our servers in more than a dozen different locations. I think the last count actually was 24 uh, availability zones around the world basically to provide the best uh, customer experience to our players. So um, we've run some recent events in Fortnite to really test the boundaries of scale. Uh, so as part of the storytelling of Fortnite, we did a one-time global event that lasted literally only several minutes, and we launched a giant rocket ship in the game. Uh, we invited all 125 million of our players right, into the game, right, all to participate at the same time. Crazy, huh? Um, so we, needless to say, we achieved a level of scale that we had never before seen in Fortnite, possibly even for any other game in the world. Um, and if you did get iced on that day uh, with any C-series uh, EC2 instances, that was probably us. Like, we really stretched the capacity to the limits, for sure. Um, so let's take a little bit closer look on how we actually accomplished all this. Um, so Fortnite run primarily in AWS. As I mentioned, we've got worldwide game server fleet across multiple AWS availability zones. Uh, we have a platform of various back-end service databases and websites that support the operations and publishing of the game. Uh, we have a large analytics ingestion pipeline um, that uh, supporting all of Epic products, including Fortnite and Unreal. 
So uh, we have dozens of microservices using a variety of technologies uh, from Java, Akka, and even Go. Um, so don't have time to talk about all of it, but let's actually do a deeper dive on our analytics pipeline. So um, to show a little bit about the scale that we're dealing with right now, um, we have an enormous amount of telemetry coming in from our users. So our game clients send data constantly all the time, 92 million events per minute, leading to two petabytes a month of data. So really just staggering numbers of data coming in that we'll use for various reasons. We'll talk a little bit about how this all works. Um, so the entire analytics platform is running on the AWS infrastructure. Uh, we've got telemetry coming in from to a Kinesis stream. Uh, we have about 5,000 shards of Kinesis running uh, to ingest all that data. We have a combination of a real-time pipeline and a batch pipeline. Uh, the real-time pipeline is largely driven off of Spark, um, and then DynamoDB for temporary storage, which feeds a number of different sources, Grafana, a scoreboards, uh, some limited time ad hoc SQL type stuff that we do. And um, then on the batch pipeline side, uh, it, everything is stored in S3. Uh, so S3 is our data warehouse. It's where we store all of our data for our data lake and our data warehouse, everything incoming. Uh, and then we do a lot of batch AWS uh, EMR, uh, batch processing on that to actually turn the data and summarize it in the tables. Um, and then we put high over S3 to provide that to a number of different sources, uh, largely Tableau for business intelligence and reporting, um, and then also ad hoc SQL for a lot of our analysts to use uh, for doing deeper uh, gameplay telemetry. So. Um, Talk, let's talk a little bit about how we use this data. Um, so one of our primary uses is around service health. So um, we, use the, we use this for um, monitoring the quality of the service that we're providing the games from the point of view of the client. Uh, so the clients are really a great, great um, place to actually understand exactly what the user is experiencing, what kind of problems they're running into, et cetera, et cetera. So we use this as an early detection system for a lot of issues, a lot of problems. Some things that you can't even detect from back-end services, such as ISP issues or other things that go on. Um, we also use it to run live tournaments. Um, so we, we actually recently did like a pro-am tournament where uh, we actually, tournament managers can set up custom scores and custom rules that basically drive real-time scoreboards that we can actually give away prizes of anything from money to swag and stuff like that at the end to the participants. Uh, we drive a lot of basic KPIs that we talked about, all the business intelligence things, you know, ARPU, and, you know, monthly active users, et cetera, et cetera, all the basic stuff we need to run the business. Um, and then we do a lot of stuff around game analysis, basically looking at the overall design of the game um, and basically saying, hey, are there any improvements we need to make to the balance or other things? So. Um, so looking ahead a little bit, um, we've got a lot of work we want to do on the globalization of our services. Uh, right now, uh, we, that platform we talked about, while the game servers themselves are distributed, a lot of the services are centralized to a, only a single availability zone, and we really want to push that out just for the sake of uh, global resiliency. So when we have a problem, it doesn't affect so many users. Uh, we're looking at, you know, with all the growth, we really want to look at better ways of managing all these microservices. So we're looking at things like EKS and Kubernetes uh, to help manage some of this stuff. Uh, and things around Amazon Guard Duty automation we have a lot of uh, we, we have a, a lot of threats uh, coming in all the time, and we just really want to make sure we're on top of that stuff. Um, and, and then looking at things like Neptune as well to help build things like social graph and anti-fraud type tools. So, um, so uh, we've been busy. Uh, we just launched season five of Fortnite Battle Royale on July 20th. So let's watch the trailer. Cool. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of the summit. So, and I'll see you all on the battle bus.